96.7 WTOB, downtown Winston-Salem. Uh, nothing cooler than Elvis Presley doing Little Sister from 1961. Speaking of cool, it's something that you want to uh, think about um, as the heat ensues uh, upon us this weekend. It's getting hot out there, uh, about 89 today. We're fortunate to have a fella come in and talk to us about the heat. Brian Gallimore, the Forsyth County Emergency Medical Assistant Chief, is here. Welcome, Chief. How you doing? Good, sir. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we appreciate you coming in. Uh, we got this idea after we looked at that dome of heat coming across. Uh, tell me a little bit about what your department does. For Scythe County Emergency Services, you handle a lot of, of different events that take place. Heat is one of them. So let's talk about that for a minute. Absolutely. That's a great question. So EMS typically sees an increase in calls during hot weather. We don't really get a call, a lot of calls that are just specifically, hey, it's hot, I'm overheated. We get a lot of calls with complaints that are related to heat stress. We see increases in calls for altered mental status, unconscious patients, dizziness, weakness, and shortness of breath. And all of that can typically be attributed to heat exposure. It's 89 today, 92 Friday, 96 Saturday, 97 on Sunday. We have a little bit of uh, of, a, of a relief on Sunday night with uh, some th thunder shower activity, 95 on Monday. Uh, so what, what is the plan for this weekend? How, how quickly can folks find themselves in trouble uh, with the heat sustained at that level? Abs yes, yes, yeah, so everyone can quickly degrade uh, in high heat and humidity, but it's really determined by the, the individual health of, of the person and how well they, they're hydrated. So. Obviously, extremes of age, the very old and the very young, they're at high risk of, of heat-related illnesses, uh, but also people with diseases like asthma, COPD, diabetes, hypertension, people who are overweight, they find themselves more prone to, to uh, uh, dealing with heat stress. Obviously, people who work outdoors, right, construction work, firefighting, those things, they find themselves dealing with heat stress a lot more. So, you know, everyone needs to be super cautious about the heat. They need to limit their exposure to the heat and also make sure that they hide and what about neighbors? Because I, well, I always check on my neighbors, and I, I would hope that my neighbors would check on me. And my kids call me even, you know, they call me, are you okay, everything fine? You know, and of course, we're not as young as we used to be. Right. <laughs> Some of us, right. I, feel, I feel okay. I feel pretty good right now. Uh, but this heat, if we're out in it a lot, especially during the middle of the day, uh, or at a sustain, you're out for a longer period of time and maybe doing some strenuous work, uh, so what should we, how should we prepare for, uh, for this weekend? Oh, great question. Uh, you know, if you can, you should always just limit your outdoor activity in weather like this, uh, or limit it to early in the morning or, or early in the evening was typically a little bit cooler to stay out of that midday heat. Um, hydrate, hydrate, and hydrate some more, right? That's, that's what I tell people. You gotta be drinking water. You need to stay away from caffeinated drinks, sugary drinks, you know, that because they can only lead to you actually being dehydrated. Right. Um, a good rule of thumb is is are you urinating, right? The frequency of urination shows that you're hydrated and also the color of your urine, is it is it clear, is it light yellow? That, it's a good sign that you're hydrated. Um, so making sure that you hydrate. Other little things, you know, you can think about wearing correct clothes, wide brim hat to keep the sun out of your face, you know, lightweight, light colored, loose fitting clothing that'll help you deal with the heat as well. And then obviously we got to protect our skin, right? Wearing sure. a sunscreen with the SPF 15 or higher, that's a UVA or UVB protection or broad spectrum, that's always going to be your best options. You know, you're going to want to look for early symptoms. You're going to look for nausea, cramps, and, and weakness. If you're experiencing any of those symptoms, you need to get out of the heat and get somewhere cool where you can hydrate. Um, in the house, you know, recommend taking cool baths or showers. Uh, obviously, air conditioning is great. Try not to rely on fans. Sometimes they can kind of give a false sense of cooling. Um, but you need to know, like, in case of, uh, you know, failure, where you can go. And a good place to go is, is our city rec centers, uh, public buildings like libraries. Those are places that you can go cool. Um, but like you said earlier, you need to check on your neighbors, and especially your neighbors that are elderly, right? They just, everyone uh, in those situations, they have a lot of medical problems and stuff. They can be a little bit more susceptible to heat illness. So making sure that we check on them, making sure that they've got co uh, adequate cooling and also water to drink. One of the things, never leave children or pets in a locked car uh, ever, 
right? But especially in, in heat, because obviously that, that lock car become an oven with a disastrous effect. Um, but, you know, once again, that's the most important thing is to know how heat can affect you, um, that you monitor yourself and that you get out of it and make sure that you hydrate and you should be just fine. Forsyth County Emergency Medical Assistant Chief Brian Gallimore is with us this morning on WTOB. We're a day ahead of this heat right now uh, or so, but after this, uh, what should people do to help overcome the heat this weekend, especially since we're looking at uh, Saturday at 96 and uh, 97, uh, you know, we get the word from the National Weather Service 97 on Sunday, and uh, the hazardous weather outlook that they tell us about is dangerously hot weather expected this weekend uh, with heat index values of 100 to 105. Uh, what does this do for uh, emergency services? How, do your, how does your team prepare uh, to handle maybe an increased number of calls or, or responds where you have to respond uh, to more than just a traffic accident or, or a fire or something? Sure, place? sure. You know, um, the, our biggest thing to respond to those is, is, first of all, to make sure that we're hydrated. You know, our supervisors are carrying water. Uh, to stop off at the hospitals to check on our providers to make sure they're staying hydrated because it's not an easy job so they're in and out of the heat all day as well so keeping them uh, uh, cool and rested trying to keep the ambulance as cool as possible uh, sometimes it can be difficult right and so we, we work to that the you know the biggest thing is making sure that when we we, we always have heat in mind when we assess that, hey, a lot of times this person might have an illness that they, they chronically deal with, and sometimes they need EMS for general help with that, but has the heat had a factor in that and in, in how we treat? Well, the heat is going to uh, sort of build on uh, something that might be a, a problem for us on a regular basis, but at a minimal level. And then here comes the heat on top of that. Mm -hmm. uh, lawn mowing this weekend, you know, a lot of folks get out there and mow their lawns. You have uh, services that get out and they're up to, from can see to can't see, as we used to say, working uh, on, uh, you know, working on people's yards and things like that. What's a, what's good advice for them? Uh, the earlier, the better. Yeah. Right. I, I, my neighbor the other day, I, his landscaper was out and it was seven in the morning. I was getting ready for work and I thought, what are they doing? Why are they here at seven in the morning? I'm like, those guys are staying out of the heat. They're being smart. Yeah. I don't yeah. mind that. I can deal with that. And uh, that's what I say. Stay out of that midday heat. Right. Make sure that you hydrate and hydrate, hydrate some more. Right. And if you think you've had enough, have another. All right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and that's great. It's good to have you in. We appreciate it. It's good to, good to have you in uh, for Scythe County Emergency Medical Assistant Chief Brian Gallimore with us to talk about the heat and how to manage it uh, during the next few days. And it's good advice uh, all, all summer long, too, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. It's good to see you. We Anytime. appreciate it. 847. Let's check that traffic.